Two patients are at Mudsheet Farm, a surprising slice of rural England, slap bang in the centre of East London. Mudsheet's a working farm with plenty of animals to keep a vet busy, and today I have been asked to ultrasound some pigs, some Tamworth sows. It's hopeful that they're pregnant, so fingers crossed Farmer Tom will hear the pitter-patter of tiny trotters soon. Hey, Tom, how's it going? How you doing, all right? Yeah, very well, thanks. Good to see you. And you, and you. So are these the potentially pregnant porcine, are they? Hopefully, hopefully so, yeah. These are our two Tamworth sows, Margot yeah. and Mary. All right, well, to ultrasound them, I'm going to have to get in there. Are they lovely, friendly pigs? They, they are so. They are very well-mannered pigs, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's very important for us here. Yeah, it's not very good if they then eat the guests. No, 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 no. So. We've, got, we've got some... Ah, uh, some encouragement. Some uh, temptation here. OK. It doesn't look very appetising to us, but that's like pig caviar, really. All right, OK. Mary, Margot, you are going to be good for the vets? <laughs> yes? If both the girls are pregnant, it would be fantastic because we haven't had piglets here for nearly seven years. And it will mean that we've got a fully functioning breeding herd of Tamworth pigs. Now, these pigs, there's only two to three hundred registered females left in the UK. And if a little place like us in the middle of London can put piglets out in the breeding populations, that's fantastic. Come around this way. Here, pigs. Come on. That's it. It's a lot different when you have kids yourself. I don't remember doing it in a farmyard with a bucket of food being given to my wife. No. <laughs> right, let's see what she's going to do. Ultrasounding a pig is not surprisingly, probably, quite difficult. In a vet practice, the largest animal you might have is a Great Dane. Well, these pigs are probably three times the size of a Great Dane, and finding the piglets within a large animal is very difficult. Good girl, I know, I know, I know. Oh. There we go. What I can see down here is just what looks like two little trotters having a swim. Can you see that? Yep. That's a, a leg. So this girl's definitely pregnant. That's marvellous news. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. So far, so good. Mary is definitely pregnant and hopefully the same will apply for Margot. So there's this one there. So, Tom, very exciting news. This one's also pregnant. So. That's brilliant. That's, that's, that's it. Well, it's good news that both of them are in pig. Yeah. Because it means we've then now got a breeding herd of Tamworth pigs, which is marvellous. So she's a little bit less along yeah. than the other one. I think she's probably going to have a few more weeks mm -hmm. on the other one. It's fantastic news. Both of them are pregnant. One is a little bit more forward than the other, so it gives us a bit of leeway between them giving birth, which is fantastic, you know? Lots of little trotters pattering around the farm, getting into mischief and causing trouble. So, Scott, just before you go, I just wondered if you'd have a look at some rams for us. OK. Getting ready to go to the Royal Berkshire show. Yeah, sure. Well, from pregnant pigs to sheep on show, why not? <laughs> Later today, elderly Hungarian Vizsla Bella is heading in to see Scott. But first, she's enjoying a quick play with her owner Darcy and children Piper and Tate. Good girl. Yes. Drop Good. it. She's like a 14-year-old toddler, really. She still behaves like a puppy when people arrive, jumping and barking. Oh, so close. Recently, <laughs> Scott made an alarming discovery. He found a potentially cancerous lump on her back, which grew quite quickly. Scott sent a sample of the lump for analysis, and the results confirmed his fears that it is a potentially dangerous tumour. The news came as a shock to Darcy and the family. Bella is such an important part of our family. You know, she, she sleeps in our bed with us and the kids absolutely adore her. You're gonna get a wet face, you know. Tate is one brave boy letting her lick his face like that, given what her breast smells like. Oh. She also has had some problems with her teeth. That's causing her a lot of discomfort. So hopefully Scott's gonna take care of her teeth. She'll have no pain in her mouth, excellent breath, which we're all looking forward to, and this lump will be removed so that we can have her with us as long as possible. 
Okay, you're gonna be a strong granny today, right? Yes. And you're in great hands with Dr. Scott. I think general anesthetic is always a worry, regardless of age, but given how old she is, that's my main concern. I can't imagine this house without her in it. She's my first baby. You're a big, strong girl. Back at Mudshoot Farm in East London, Scott's next two patients are prize rams. Hi, how you going? I'm Scott. I'm I'm nice Reece. to meet you. I'm Reese. How are you yeah. going? And who's this Reece. strapping chap here? His name's called Tree Hill Cameron. Tree Hill Cameron? Yeah. Very posh. So, hello, mate. Very, very handsome boy you are, aren't you? Hey. Now, I notice there's another chap over here. Yeah. So, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, this one's called Steve. <laughs> this one's got two the names. Tree Hill Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Steve. Yeah, that's there a he Steve. <laughs> Reese is one of the mud shoot farmers, and he's hoping his rams are in tip top condition, ready to compete at the Royal Berkshire Show next week. I just want to give him a health check, just a check over, make yeah. sure he's all good. Yeah, oh, he's um, looking amazing. Yeah. These two rams are about to take quite a long journey from the centre of London, East London, all the way out to Berkshire. So it's really important that a vet checks them over first to make sure that they are fit to travel. So the most important thing, I think, for travel is to check his legs and feet and to yes. make sure that he's able to withstand the journey. So yep. I'm just going to have a little look at you, mate. Oh, okay. Tree Hill Cameron is a rare breed of ram called a white-faced woodland. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll just swap sides with you. While mud shoot is all about saving animals in need, it's also been the saviour of some of the workers who care for the animals. So what was your history with getting into the farm? Oh, well, basically, I was, uh, I was causing a lot of trouble around my area. Um, and I used to, you know, knock down ginger, you know, throw stones at windows and do basic stuff what you shouldn't be done scally. yet. And um, there was my local farm back where I live in Vauxhall uh, called Vauxhall City Farm. So um, I was helping out there, volunteering. Yeah. And then that's when I got into animals, right. basically from there. I ain't looked back since. <laughs> so animals changed your life, eh? Yes, they did. Yeah? Hell of a lot. If it weren't for farming now, I think I'd probably be in prison by now. Just causing a lot of trouble. I would have just, yeah, I would have been in prison by now. But it's changed my life completely, so it means a lot to me. A reformed Reese now has his heart set on a win at the show. OK, Cameron, be a good boy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> of course, for me as a vet, I need to assess the ram to make sure that he's healthy. But also, it's quite interesting to check the features of the ram that the judge will be looking for in the show ring, such as how impressive his manhood is. Besides being gigantic, they both feel of a similar size. There isn't any lumps or bumps. Good. They feel perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy with his health. He's an impressive specimen, so I think he's uh, more than healthy to travel to the fair, so. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, should we tie this guy yes. up and we'll have a quick look at Steve then? All right, Steve. How's it going, mate? <laughs> eh? For the next ram I'm about to look at, his name's Steve. Just Steve. He's a great looking boy, isn't he? Yeah, this is my favorite ram. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Let's have a little look at you, mate. Oh, I can see the problem back here. I noticed that he has a little bit of discharge at his back end, and Reese informs me that he has had some scours, which is basically sheep diarrhoea. Have you fed him anything different, anything that he might have got hold of that might be toxic? Or? Uh, no, it's just obviously he's out on the grass. Steve's scours could be caused by lots of different things. It could be parasites, it could be something toxic that he's eaten, but because he's recently been treated for parasites and he's not unwell, my guess is that he's just been eating quite a lot of wet pasture. Well, I mean, he seems very healthy otherwise, so yeah. let's just hope that the hay binds him up. My treatment plan for Steve is basically just to dry this boy up. We're going to be giving him a lot of dry food in the form of hay only. Hopefully that will just solidify the diarrhoea back to normal poos in time for him to travel to the show. Let's get him on the road to glory. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Show them what you're made of, Bella. All right, big, strong, old girl. 
At the Richmond practice, Scott's now back from Mudshoot Farm. And Darcy has arrived with 14-year-old Bella. She's so shaky and nervous, poor thing. Good morning, Darcy. Morning. Hi, Bella. Well, I don't think I've ever had a more nervous-looking pair. I know. <laughs> the We're practice. both quite nervous. Yes. Look at you, your gorgeous old dear. Hey, what are you quivering for? She thinks she might have uh, heard what might be up today. I think so. Mm. All right, sweetie. Well, do you want to come and see me? Come on, Bella. Come on. Darcy's brought beautiful Bella into the practice today because we are considering an anaesthetic and surgery. Obviously, it's a very nerve-wracking decision, so we have laboured over it, being that Bella is the grand old age of 14 and a half. So, I can see very clearly that uh, those teeth are looking pretty grim in there, aren't they, sweetie? Hey. We've tried to avoid, well, you licking my face because your breasts are disgusting, <laughs> isn't it? But also an anaesthetic to try and sort them out because of her age. But uh, I think it's something that we need to address. Yeah. And then alongside that, other lumps and bumps that we've got, particularly this one back here. So that's a fairly significant lump. Do you feel that that's grown even in recent days? Uh, possibly. It also might be a bit harder mm. as well. The lump that's growing on Bella's back, I'm quite concerned about. When I saw it recently, it was much smaller, much softer. And in the space of just a few days and weeks, it's become much larger and harder. Well, the sample that we did came up with something called spindle cells, and they can be associated with some not very nice types of tumours. If this spindle cell tumour turns out to be graded as a fibrosarcoma, that's really bad news. They're very malignant. They spread locally, but also can spread to other parts of the body. So it does make me quite worried about Bella's future. That is a, a decent sized lump as it is. And to remove it, we're gonna to have to have quite a, a large margin to remove it completely. And then alongside that, I feel like it would be remiss of me not to approach the mouth, even though it's not ideal, because we like to tend to do sterile and non-sterile surgeries separately. But we just don't have that um, privilege with her because she's an old girl. The anaesthetic is more risky than anything else. And that's the bit that we're concerned about. And that's why together we just haven't gone down that road. But she is strong and she's healthy and it feels like we're at crunch time. Do you feel the same? I do. And the longer we can have her with us, the better. So yes. if this is gonna make her quality of life better, I yeah. think that's what we need to do. Mm. Okay. Be a good, strong girl for me, okay? Right? Everybody's gonna be waiting for you at home. Right? Cool. You be a good girl. It's very hard to leave her. She's my, my baby. But I know that Scott's gonna absolutely look after her. I'm just gonna be waiting next to my phone for the call when she's out of surgery and, and safe. Okay, bye, Grandma. See you later. You're in good hands with Dr. Scott. I know it. Okay, I'm going now. Bye, Darcy. Bye. bye. In a nearby park in Richmond, another one of Scott's patients, five-month-old Vince, is struggling to enjoy playtime with his owners. Come on, good boy, come on. Vince is Karina and Gaz's first pet, but they're extremely worried. Come on, good boy. The little French bulldog isn't thriving or behaving like an energetic young pup. Vince doesn't have those puppy-like mannerisms. He's very, very lethargic. Come on. What's this? We struggle to take him out for mm. walks and he he's just... Like, he's like a little old man, really. He means the absolute world. And people say that when you don't have a dog. You, they say, you know, your life will change and it's that unconditional love. You've had this little puppy for five months out of my whole life, just five months. Nobody can explain to you how much you love your dog until you actually have one. It's part of the family, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Karina and Gaz are so concerned about Vince's lethargic behaviour 
They've booked him in for an appointment with Scott. Is that, is that our number one priority at the moment, you know, to get him better and... Yeah. Um, so we think it's time to go and sort the little man out. We can't imagine life without him, can we? No. Not at all. Such a quivery girl, aren't you? Oh, dear. You don't She's... need to worry, little one. She's so sweet. It's time for elderly Bella's surgery. No, oh, she's so scared. And Scott has assembled a full team to assist, including vet Phoebe and nurses Reagan and Nathan. OK, so team, um, we have a nervous one for us all today. We all know Bella, an anaesthetic underdog of this age is not something we do lightly, is it? So we just need to make sure that we have kind of thought through all the possible complications, okay, and make sure that we're all of one mind and we get the outcome, which is that she wakes up from the anaesthetic absolutely fine with uh, gleaming white teeth and no longer any lump on her back, mm. all right? It really is a catch-22 with Bella today because I found and am concerned about the possibility of her having cancer, but to remove the cancer means that I need to potentially put her life at risk. Okay, so everyone ready? Yeah. Deep breaths, everyone. Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heart is fine. After a few minutes, we can see that Bella's breathing is fairly regular and her colour is good. It is the moment when we can start feeling a bit more confident about things and we can move forward with the procedures. I'm just going to take this little one off as well. Just so let's not leave anything to chance. There's another little tumour which I'm not so worried about, but at the same time I think, you know what, let's not leave any questions or any stones unturned. So her breath is immediately better and removed two potentially cancerous lumps, so we've done well. So let's wake this girl up, shall we? This is a dangerous moment for a dog waking up because you're bringing them out of the maintenance of anaesthetics. So it's where the heart and the lungs need to change and there's lots of physiological changes associated with being woken up. And sometimes that can react badly with the anaesthetic and you can have issues. You've still got the adrenaline in your pocket, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, come on then. Bella, Bella. Heart rate's raising now, so. Good. I'm just listening to Bella's heart just to make sure that uh, it's beating strongly and now I can hear it starting to speed up. So that means she's starting to find some consciousness and we can both relax. As I hear Bella's heart rate speed up, I'm pleasantly assured that things are going well and she starts to recover really quite quickly for an old girl. She seems pretty happy and I'm very relieved. Look at that, yeah, but that mouth feels nice. Bella will sleep off the anaesthetic before going home later today. Mm, well done. All right, you sleep it off. Yeah? I'll call your mum. Come on, mate. <laughs> Little cutie. In Hatfield, north of London, little five-month-old Vince is so unwell that Scott has referred him directly to the Royal Veterinary College for testing. Not too sure at the moment kind of what's going on. We'll be fine. We're really worried, but hopefully we'll be able to get to the bottom of it today. Hi. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, nice, to nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Karina. <laughs> and this must be Vince. <laughs> Say hello. 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 Dr. Rebecca hello. Geddes will be oh, investigating Vince's case. Hello. Should we go through to a consult room? Come on in. What is your main concern about Vince at the moment? What's the reason that you've come? Here today? I think it's probably his weight. Like, he's obviously very skinny at the back. He's not putting any weight on. Yeah. Um, it's also yeah. his temperament. He just, obviously, he's only five months, so he doesn't have that kind of excitable energy that most puppies have. A lot of people have stopped us and asked if he's an older dog. He sleeps a lot, like a hell of a lot. 
When we see puppies like this who aren't growing normally, we sometimes call that failure to thrive. There are a lot of different possible reasons for that. Some of them are hormonal problems and can be anything as varied as an internal organ that isn't working very well, through to being born with a problem where the metabolism doesn't work. So there's really a lot of possibilities on the table. Where I would suggest we start is with some blood tests. And then I think also doing some imaging would be a good idea. And then it'll be a case of putting all of those results together to decide where to move next with his investigation. Perfect. Thank you. If you just give it one little last hug for now and I'll pop him through. Oh. I want to get lipstick on you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not done. It'll be fine. I think it's just the unknown of it. Is I just wish I knew instantly. Yeah. So that we could just make him all better. giving him some sedation. What we're going to do is essentially take a 3D X-ray of Vince. Pretty much going to do the whole of Vince just to see if we can find anything that might be contributing to him not putting weight on very well. So this is Vince's CT um, and his tongue in here is really, really, really big. Oh, OK. Um, so this is quite enlarged. And also his joints from his jaw, basically, they're angled in a very strange orientation. And then there's another little finding on the very back of the dog. So here in his muscles, in the thigh, very back, yep. there's some area that is a little bit mineralized. Oh, um, and okay. there may also be muscle um, that is affected. So he probably has okay. something wrong with his musculature, but in general, not just in his head, it's but okay. throughout the whole body. So we've got thickening of the tongue and thickening of the diaphragm and some other muscle changes. So what we want to do next is investigate the muscles further by doing what we call an EMG, where we'll look at the electrical activity in the muscles. A normal muscle should just, at rest, be silent. We should have a nice flat line, but instead we're seeing a lot of kind of up and down and you hear that really loud kind of aeroplane sound. That is completely abnormal and tells me that we've probably got a serious muscle problem going on. Hi, Karina, do you want to come yeah. through? So I've had Vince looked at by a number of different people. Mm -hmm. Neurology have been having a look at him and um, we've got some blood test results and the results of the CT scan. Yeah. When we look through his body, there are some changes that we can find. So mm -hmm. there's a muscle in his back leg that's got a little bit of mineralization, okay. a bit of a change in the muscle. Yeah. From his blood test, there's also something called CK that we can measure that is like an enzyme that comes from the muscle. Right. And his CK is really, really high. Normal is up to about 400. His is 37,000. So okay. it's massively yeah. elevated and that's another sign to me that his muscles aren't right, working okay. as we would expect them to. It does make me worried that we might have something more like muscular dystrophy or something like that going okay. on. Right. Um something like that would be really quite a devastating diagnosis for him. Um because it it may be something that we couldn't do anything about for him. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> but this is something really uncommon, really rare. Does that mean a shorter life? Most probably. Okay. A much shorter life, yeah, yeah. Vince will be kept at the RVC overnight for further testing, and then Karina plans to visit Scott to discuss the final diagnosis. We could be looking at a condition that will be life-limiting and that won't give Vince a good quality of life. 
Hey, you've woken up very well, haven't you? Yeah? Ready to go home? At the Richmond Clinic, Bella has recovered from her anaesthetic, and a very relieved Scott is looking forward to reuniting the old dog with her family. I'm soon. Yeah. Yeah. Can see the kids. Yeah? Upstairs, Mum Darcy, Piper and Tate are waiting to see the much-loved member of the family. I've been missing her so much today. I've been very worried, as a mum usually is, when their children are in surgery. Um, I got the call around 2.30 that she was out of surgery and safe, and then my day was much better from there. Come on. Who's this? Who's this? <gasps> Oh, my Hello. word. Hello. Hello. So, it's very bright and happy considering, which is really, really great. Oh, what a um, girl. Now, you can see those big dressings, so um, what lies beneath might be a little bit shocking, OK? So you have to help Mum look after her, all right? It's fantastic to be able to discharge Bella back to her loving owners. She is a very old girl, was a very risky anaesthetic, it was a major surgery, so it's a huge relief for me to be able to send her home. Let me just show you her new pearly white teeth. Oh my word, look at those. Those do not look like a 14-year-old dog's teeth. Look at that. Those are amazing. Yes. Hey, do you want to check her breath Tate, for me? Check her You're breath. the breath tester. Better? Yeah. Yeah? Doesn't Good. taste like garbage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But obviously over the next few days, what we're waiting for is the results from the lab from the lump. OK, so that's the worry that's still out there. When we get the result, we'll obviously let you know. And hopefully, if it is cancer, we've got all of it. Fingers crossed. Exactly. Unfortunately, there is still quite a dark cloud hanging over the family until we get the results back from the lab to confirm what grade of malignancy these tumours are or if they spread anywhere else. Thank you, Scott, for looking after Thank her. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Hey, I think you're quite ready to go home, aren't you, my love? Hey, all right. Well, you guys go. Thank you. Give her lots of love, all right? And I'll be in touch when I've got the results. Thank all you, right. Scott. Bye, kids. See you later, monkey. OK, on, remember lady. to brush those teeth, yours and the dogs, yeah? <laughs> Bye, Darcy. Thank you, Bye. Scott. See ya. Bye. Thank you. A week after the visit to the RVC with her beloved pup, Vince... Hello. Hello. Karina is back Hello. to see Scott. Sadly, tests confirmed Vince has an incurable muscle condition. Scott's downstairs if you want to oh, go straight you. down. Vince is suffering with a condition akin to muscular dystrophy in people, which is basically where all of his muscles are wasting away they are becoming mineralised, so they become hard, and they lose their function. So his tongue is solid, his swallowing muscles are weak, his muscles across his whole delicate frame are just wasting away in front of us. So it is not something that you want to find, and when you do, there's not much that we can do about it. To see that in a puppy that's six months old is, uh, is heartbreaking. You know, our hearts are all broken for you guys because I just don't know how this must feel, mm. you know. How are you guys going? Um, he's still our little man, so we just love him no matter what. We have seen a big difference. Very lethargic a lot of the time. Yeah. It isn't normal and he has lost his spark. This is just not a disease that we diagnose in dogs regularly. It's a highly irregular, very rare condition and in all honesty, I've never seen it in the full 20 years that I've been a vet. A time will come mm. where you and Gaz and I feel that he's not enjoying himself mm -hmm. and his quality of life deteriorates. Yeah. And he deteriorates to a point where not being able to get up, not being able to enjoy your company, mm -hmm. not being able to go to the toilet with dignity, mm. you know, just not enjoying life. Okay. But unfortunately, it is going to be weeks, I think. OK. OK. <laughs> no. He's just such a baby. You little man. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so all we can do is just make him feel so loved. Sadly, just days later, Vince lost his brave battle. Vince was a heartbreaking case uh, to be diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, a wasting disease in such a young puppy. And, you know, Karina and Gaz are so brave and so wonderful and, you know, you can see their hearts breaking and there's nothing you can do. So it's, uh, yeah, just a really hard one to, to get over, really. Yeah, very difficult. Hmm, one of the hardest in my career. A week after surgery to remove a large tumour from her back, elderly dog Bella is full of beans. Good girl, sit. Good girl. It was terrible for the first five days. She literally couldn't sleep. She couldn't lay down. Good girl. But amazingly, she has come back to her active puppy-like self. I'm, I'm really thankful. Yes, that's a good girl. During surgery, Scott also carried out a much-needed teeth clean, and the old dog's breath has improved dramatically. It smells better, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. The licking used to smell like rotten potatoes and poo, so it was very disgusting. You're next. And now it smells like cream and fresh strawberries. <laughs> Have you had enough? No. <laughs> I like it. Scott is now making a home visit to deliver the pathology results from the tumour. Hey, Darcy. Well, hello, Scott. How are, How are you? you? Good. I hope you are the bearer of good news. Yes. Well, we need to go inside and chat about that. And the lady of the hour. Hello, baby. Say hello to Dr. Scott and thank you. Well. All right. Follow let's keep me. It Come on until in. Until we talk. Yeah, hey? I guess that's true. So first things first, the pathology results. So we knew that it was a tumour that we should be concerned about. That's why we went through the whole process. But thankfully, it's come back as a grade one sarcoma, okay, which is basically the lowest malignancy possible. So for Bella to have cancer, this is a good one to have because it's very unlikely to have spread. And although I had to take a lot of Bella away, I've got the result that I was after, which means complete cure. That's amazing news. It makes me think that all of it was worth it, because I have to say, Scott, when I picked her up and I saw it was under the bandages, I was a little worried. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But it, it makes it all worth it. I'm so thankful. Thank yeah. you for all giving right. us more years with our sweet girl. You're so welcome. It took a huge amount of bravery to put an old girl like her through this procedure, but we've done it. We've got the result we're looking for, and hopefully Bella will live a long way into the future. So how are you getting on with uh, maintaining her beautiful, shiny white teeth? Well, to be honest, I think we could use a bit of help. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought since you're here... Sure. ..maybe you could give us some pointers. More than happy. <laughs> hey, can we brush your teeth? All right, so if you just hold her there... Come here, lady. Just put a little bit on. OK. OK, so definitely a two-person job. The difficulty is just kind of holding your head, but once you've got a head in position, you just want to pressure from brush to the other hand. So. Brushing away, so top arcade and then bottom. Okay. Oh, she's doing really well for you. You're obviously better at this than I am. Well, you know, a little <laughs> bit of experience, just a bit. And luckily, it's chicken-flavoured toothpaste, so they tend to quite like it. It's a really great result. I'm really happy because not only have I fixed the top in that there's no more bacteria and smelly breath, but I fixed the back as well. So top and tail, perfect. Good smelling breath, hey? and a healed bottom. Yes, and a kiss. And a kiss that I don't even mind either. <laughs> hey, it's far better than before, missus. Oh, see, I won't say no to that kind of kiss now. It smells far well better. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Good girl. <laughs> hmm? Over at Mudshoot Farm, there's good news for one of Scott's expectant mums. Is that all right? Is that good? Hey, is that good? What are them little piglets doing? Hey, little piglets. 
two strong, healthy piglets growing very fast is amazing. You know, it's the first time there's been piglets here at the farm for nearly eight years. So it's a fantastic thing to have happen. Little pig. Yes, we would have liked more, but the fact that we've got two healthy piglets, a boy and a girl, is absolutely amazing. So these two Tamworth piglets are the start of our contribution to their conservation. Look at you, lovely little piglets. And at the annual Royal County Berkshire Show, Scott has arrived for a final checkup on one of his patients. Morning, Reese. How How's it going? Mate? Yeah. Right, thank you. Good. Hello, Steve. How are you, mate? How's that runny bum of yours? Reese has brought several of his rams and ewes from Mudchute Farm to compete at the show. Reese has asked me to come along today to check over his sheep, particularly Steve, and make sure he's okay and ready for the ring. Hey, let me just have a look at your back end, my friend. See, oh yeah, that's much better, isn't it? It's not as runny as it was. And I can see there, poo on the floor, much more formed, isn't it? So yes. that's good. Yes, it's got a lot stronger. Great, that all hay diet's uh, done the trick, eh? Hey? Yes, definitely. Bound definitely. him up a little bit. Yeah. Steve's had a little bit of the runs, and we wondered if maybe it was a little bit of nerves, but I actually think he probably was fed something a little bit different at the farm. Sometimes they have visitors that feed them things that they shouldn't. He's got a bit of an upset stomach, but now having an all hay diet has dried him up and he's ready to go. So obviously you are looking suited and booted, sir, ready to go for the big yes. event. Yes. What is involved with sorting out this guy for the um, Basically, what we're doing now is just giving his face a tidy up. Obviously, we clear all the crust out of his eyes. Yeah. Now I've given Steve the all clear and he is perfectly healthy and ready for the ring. We need to get him show ready. So it does mean a little bit of ram personal grooming, which requires oiling of his face, giving him a brush down, basically making him look beautiful. All right, good luck, Reese. Thank you very much. Good luck. Watching Reese and Steve step out onto that stage, everyone's feeling quite nervous but I'm sure they're going to go well. They've got such a great bond and they look fantastic. Bit nervous. <laughs> Always am though when it's our first show, so fingers crossed. <laughs> When I'm judging, I'm looking for a good structured sheep with a good straight back, stood on four legs, a nice head, in case of a ram, a strong head. The mouth needs to be good, the teeth need to be good. The wool's got to be a nice sort of texture to it, not too loose and fluffy. Obviously, the ram has got to have two decent testicles matching. And basically, how they walk, really. Watching Reese and Steve from the sideline, I can see that the judge is eyeing them both up very well. There's some incredible animals in the ring. And Reese and Steve do such a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. They get a third place, which is just an amazing result for them. Well done. Yeah. Nicely done. <laughs> yes, third. Good job, Steve. Hey? They loved your work. Well done, mate. Very good. Oh, that's awesome. Good effort. Thank you. But me and Steve did really well today. We uh, we got a third place. So we yeah, we done quite well against big classes, so really proud of him. So they're all clean? Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Yeah, you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. It was a good thing that Scotty did come today because I was short of hands, so I needed someone to show one of the ewes for me as well. Do you yeah. mind helping me take one in and show one? Yeah, I'd love to, but I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Oh, I'll show you how it's done. OK. Yeah. All right. OK, hopefully it's just as simple as grab a rope and walk. Sort of. OK. Sort of. <laughs> Great. Come on then, girls. And turn it around. That's it. And just hold underneath the chin. That's it, like that, yeah. It's quite nerve wracking, actually. Because, you know, this is a really important moment for all of these farmers. 
if the sheep place well, it increases the value of the flock and that really helps the farmers. So yeah, it is a, a very important moment for all of them. Come here, come on, come on then. Come on then. Yep. That's it, that's it. Yeah. I'll be honest, I've never shown a sheep before and didn't really know what to do. I walked the sheep like a bit of a lump and I had to then push the legs in to be straight. I had to lift the head up, I had to sort of move around and then sort of look at the judge at the same time. It was very confusing. I didn't do a very good job. And I wasn't wearing the right clothing. No lab coat, felt naked. <laughs> I think I've just come last. Yeah, at least I'll beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. So my illustrious show ring career has ended <laughs> with a last place. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've got a new career ahead. Um, yeah. And Reese beat me as well, which I'm really annoyed about. <laughs> 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 Right, let's, let's steal it, let's steal it. Okay. Right, run, <laughs> run! <laughs>I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.